and things are about to get hot. Woo! Because we're talking about Summertime from 1955, directed by David Lean. A little rundown of the story. Jane Hudson, played by Katherine Hepburn, a single middle-aged elementary school secretary from Akron, Ohio, is on her summer vacation and enjoying her lifelong dream of a, of a vacation in Venice. She is set up as your typical gawking, flustered, overwhelmed American in the old world for the first time, running into a veteran, ugly American elderly couple, and are met by the landlady of the house she will be staying at, along with an American painter and his wife. The first half of the film sets up Jane's journey around Venice and serves as a showcase of the beautiful architecture and city of Venice and its various canals. She continues to meet. Uh, she continues continues on her uh, merry way through the city. She meets a street urchin named Moro, uh, who likes to fleece uh, chump tourists, and he smokes like a chimney. Uh, mm-hmm. In this time, we see the sad Jane looking around her, all by herself, looking on at other couples. And at uh, one cafe, she feels the predatorial eyes of one Italian man checking her out, and she quickly skedaddles. The Ooh. next day, while shopping at an antique store, she finds out that the owner of uh, that antique store is the same creeper from the previous day, a guy named Renato. Uh, the meat cute continues around some red glass goblet and her coming back to pick up a pair for it. Uh, she goes back the next day and is bummed out to find him not there, but he seeks her out later that night and confesses that he's got the hots for her. Uh, uh, he uses all his pickup artist tactics, gets a date out of the deal until the old couple shows back up at the the house she's staying at, and they show off a pair of very similar looking goblets that she paid uh, a price for, thinking they were antiques. Uh, Jane's a bit perturbed by this. Renato uh, might have swindled her, but apparently old designs, coincidence, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the two go check out a concert they get some flowers and I guess they are in love now the next day Jane gets gussied up to go hang out with her Italian boy toy but she winds up meeting with Renato's assistant who then turns out to be his son and oh he's also married she lays this all out to the American painter's wife who says her and her husband who have been having problems too what a great coincidence as painter dude is banging the landlady Uh, yada 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 he's married but unhappily Get over it, lady. Let's bang. They bang. Everything is pretty. But hey, Jane has to go back to America and has to make that decision to go back and leave her boy toy behind. But will that transpire? Will they meet at that train station? <gasps> will they? Uh, no, they don't, kind of. They they do and they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so, RJ, mm-hmm. um, have you ever traveled to venice not recently okay not um, ever for that matter <laughs> have you have you ever traveled alone uh yes yeah I have. where have you traveled uh, to? not in mo- <laughs> well in commutes i suppose um when i my first year of university i moved to colorado and i did a year there and oh. the first four or five days i was there i was com- i moved into the dorm early and uh, i was the only one there for about like a week so, does that count? Uh, I, not uh, not in my mind because you kind of went to a place to like live and to mm-hmm. like actually go for a task, not so much like to travel and tour on your own. Okay, um, well, n- not on my own. Then I've always had either like Andrea or like my dad or brother or something. So mm-hmm. I guess never on my own. Yeah. So I mean, I guess that's like a very strange alien thing to me—the idea of like mm-hmm. traveling without like a specific purpose. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I don't know why I thought I'd ask that, but uh, RJ, sure. what did you think of Summertime? Hey, Jarrett. Yeah. Did you know that Catherine Hepburn uh, wore trousers before it was fashionable? Oh, I think I did know that. Fuck off. How did you know that? <laughs> um, I don't know. It kind of comes up. I, well, because I always think of her. It doesn't uh, matter. Well, did you ever watch The Critic? Do you remember The Critic? Uh no. Okay. Is that the Jay Sherman from yes. The Simpsons? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So before The yeah. Simpsons, he had his own show on ABC, and mm-hmm. his so his mom is Catherine Hepburn, <laughs> right? And so that's like always like or it was like a parody of her, but yeah. So that's like that was my introduction actually to Catherine Hepburn. If you want to jump mm-hmm. on ahead, um, sure. But okay. So RJ, what did you think of Summertime? Okay. So I just wanted to leave with that lead with that fun little note there. Okay. Uh, so as we discussed last time. Um, personal life has gotten in the way of my movies and I was really dreading this because I just didn't have time. And I suspect that people would think I would not like this movie because uh, it's just like a slow, sad movie. However, 
I think I'm going to surprise people. I actually enjoyed this movie. Uh, I didn't think it was amazing, but I enjoyed watching it the whole way through. There's a few slow parts, but I think on the whole, I actually really liked it. Um, well, I think RJ, it's really, yes, I am going to throw this in there. I think Uh-oh. this is the worst movie we've watched so <gasps> far in the creep. Oh no! Yeah. Well, here here it comes, baby. I'm gonna lay it all out for you. Okay. So perfect. actually, actually, Great. you start. Great. Oh no, no, no. You. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I'll start. I guess. Okay. Um, sure. I pop this movie in, and yep. after like two months of watching horror movies, this movie yeah. was quite the shock to the system. The upbeat music that's just used <laughs> in that score. Uh, the title card is just like, yeah. holy crap, look, it's color. It's like blues and yellows, and it's like, man, this is a, a, a crazy. Like, I haven't seen these colors in so long. Um, yep. Everything I usually watch are like black and flesh colors and browns and mm-hmm. red. So uh, there was that aspect that like immediately made me go, whoa. Um, so, yeah, uh, t- on, I guess like, okay, mm-hmm. this movie's amazing looking. Um, sure. it's, it like, it looks great. The technicolors are like, just, they just pop off the screen. Uh, Venice is a very nice looking city. Yep. Um, and so, I mean, obviously, uh, I was reading like David Lean actually wound up having his second home in Venice. He loved it so much after making this film. Yeah. Um, who wouldn't? And I guess this is also, uh, David Lean's favorite of his own films, which is hmm. kind of crazy considering he's the man who also made the bridge on the river Kwai and Lawrence of Arabia. Ah, and uh, yeah, and he's he actually has about we have about four more David Lean movies uh, to watch in our Criterion Creep if we ever I make it all the way down. Uh, actually, we'll be watching uh, two of his movies in uh, about like two months because uh, he, he made two uh, Charles Dickens movies, uh, Great Good Expectations, stuff. and uh, something else. <laughs> Oliver Twist. That's it. Oh, so okay, we'll, wait, we'll, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll be watching more D Lean. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I only watched Bridge on the River Kwai like a couple of years ago. Uh, I had just like never seen it and I watched that movie, uh, and it's really amazing. And Lawrence of Arabia, I actually got to see in theater, uh, a little mm-hmm. while ago on a rewatch. And that movie is also amazing. This movie cool. is just like, I don't care about <laughs> anything in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. so let me just go through some facts. Uh, sure. so the screenplay, uh, that David Lean and, uh, H.E. Bates, H.E. Bates, uh, wrote is based mm-hmm. on a play called the time of the cuckoo by Arthur Lawrence. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's, that's a play. <laughs> There's like, yeah. it's, I, it hasn't been really gone back to very often. Um, like it's kind of like, it's kind of fallen out of favor and I can kind of see why. Um, so the one thing that was like really annoying to me for the first, like 45 minutes of this movie is it came off as a Venice tourism movie where it's just like lots of longing panning shots of the architecture of Venice. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah. And it's just like, this doesn't seem to like be moving forward at all. Like, it's just like, Hey, looking at Venice, which is fine if you're like, I guess, invested in Venice, but I'm not, Mm -hmm. um, it's a place I've never been to and I don't plan on ever going, um, for fear of, um, red, cloaked children um uh so yeah i don't know uh let's see here this movie really had a lost in translation vibe to it that i think mm-hmm. like obviously lost in translation didn't invite and invent that at all like i'm pretty sure that this is like a trope of like a uh, person being in a strange land or and like not speaking the language and kind of being on their own and then on top of that being a, like lonely uh it's right. been around so that kind of was there for me in the back of my mind um but there came a point that like i just kind of stopped taking notes in this movie um like mm-hmm. it, cuz it just turned into exactly every romantic comedy not even comedy just like romance story i've ever seen and it never it doesn't like do anything with that um right. it's it's sort of like the sure. the framework of that told well i guess like or not even told well just told generically uh with this like amazing backdrop it, like visually mm-hmm. it looks really good but the story like i i could care less about uh the jane character i really like didn't give a crap about renato her uh her her uh <laughs> yeah. lo- her uh italian lover who i've later on i've got uh his his fucking dialogue written down but jesus christ he's he's just crap but yeah, he's um, pretty bad yeah <laughs> but um so 
there. So that's kind of like, I don't know, wherever am I, where am I at? Location, yeah, the location and all that stuff's good. But yeah, this story, story-wise, this the story in this is like dull. And I'm mm-hmm. all about story, folks, in case you haven't figured that out yet. Um, sure. I don't know, man. There's just like not much for me to like sink my teeth into, even like in talking about this. I mean, uh, I I remember years ago I watched uh, David Lean's Brief Encounter uh, film, mm-hmm. which we'll be obviously watching in someday down the road, and I just was kind of like pretty underwhelmed by that too. So I don't know if it's just something about like David Lean's taste and subject matter, like these conventional sort sure. of stories and the way he decides to tell these stories that just like don't appeal to me at all. Like they're just not movies that I want to watch. Um, there's mm-hmm. not a lot there for me, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, but you, you could go on and tell me w- what you really liked about this movie. Cause sure. uh, I guess I, I thought you might've been on the same page as me, but I'm curious what you got out of this. No. Uh, yeah. So, um, like I, I totally thought you wouldn't like it. So it's not, a, it's not in Jarrett's wheelhouse as mm. some people would say. Yeah. And I, that's why I, I, I said to like, I think people would have probably expected me not to like this because all I talk about is like movies with abs and farts and butts and stuff. Right. And it might've been the time I watched it. Like, um, again, nobody cares, but like I, I've been really busy. So like I hadn't watched a movie in a week and it was at the end of a long day and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I was like dreading watching it, but it was just easy watching. Um, so what I like about this movie, and it all comes down to one thing basically, is Catherine Hepburn's sadness. She's hmm. so sad in a lot of scenes and I feel like it, I feel it captures it so well. That's why I like it. Hmm. And I'll start, I'll start by uh, reaffirming some of the things you said. The intro, when it started, I was like, oh God. Like, cause it's like, bum, 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 da, dum, bum, ba, <laughs> and you're just like, like you said, after watching like horror movies for a month, you're just like, Ugh. like, I guess some people might be like, Ooh, refreshing. Yeah. Um, when the first 10 minutes, I, so I watched this with Andrea in the first 10 minutes, she's like, Holy shit. All of these characters are so fucking annoying because it's like, <laughs> cause Catherine Hepburn talks really weird. Um, That's, it's like, eh, see, yeah. what are you going to do here? No, yeah, that is Catherine um, Hepburn. And then all the other characters, like, so she meets that old couple and uh, they're like super just like loud and like nasally, like, hey, what are you doing yeah. in Venice? So like yeah, they, all they, that stuff. They, yeah, they are the, uh, they are the ugly Americans. That's kind yeah. of their role uh, being obnoxious uh, tourists. Right. So all, all that stuff is like super annoying. And um, like even like you said, like the story, there's not much to it. Like I guess maybe in 1952, it would have been a little bit more scandalous for like 55. a dude who 50. Oh, shit. Well, OK, 55. A dude who is like um, basically divorced, but has like hey, a mistress. Hey, RJ, it was scandalous yeah. because trivia from Wikipedia itself. Upon seeing the completed film, production code administration head Jeffrey Sherlock notified United Artists executives the film would not be approved because of its depiction of adultery. A particular concern was the scene in which Jane and Renato consummate their relationship. 18 feet of footage was deleted and the PCA granted its approval. The National mm-hmm. Catholic Legion of Decency, however, objected to a line of dialogue that was, final, that, that was finally trimmed and the organization bestowed the film with a B rating, designating the film morally objectionable in part. Heart. So yeah, this, that makes this, sense. This, so it's like the idea that this movie was upsetting uh, is crazy, I guess. <laughs> well, see, that's what I mean. Like, so I, I actually had a little bit of um, a separation from that, or n- not in a bad way. I was like, I, okay, I can get how like sixty years ago this was probably like a hot, like a hot subject. Like now it doesn't Saucy. matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was saucy. So, like, I was fine with that. Um, but anyways, the point – so the part that I really liked is I think the – like, I can't remember what her actual name is, like the character's name. Jane. But Catherine Everton, Jane. Jane Hudson, I she, think, yeah. Her life is so sad that I just, like – not I connected with it, not because like I think my life is sad, but I was just like I really sympathize for her. Like there's scenes where – that scene where – she asked like to go out with those other people and they're like well you could come but you'd kind of be like a fifth wheel and she's like oh no yeah of course like i don't i don't need to come and then just kind of shows her like sitting like leaning back so they can't see her and she's just really sad and then she sees them later and like she's by herself so she feels awkward and like makes it look like someone is there before they like walk by and then they walk by and don't even notice but then the dude she likes walks by and 
sees that the seat's taken and then keeps walking. And then like in that instant, it's like in Dead Ringers. I never talked about this, but so in that instant, you see like such sadness in her face. It's the same as in Dead Ringers when uh, the lady like confronts the twins and then like she goes to walk away and then uh, the one twin like in an instant Jeremy Irons face just completely collapses on itself. And I think I think it was the same with this. Like maybe not as strong as Jeremy Irons, but I got the same feeling from that. So hmm. I really like that. And there was a line at the end that I thought was just awesome, uh, where she's talking about like why she has to leave and stuff like that. And she's she's like, all my life I've stayed at um, a party, or I've stayed at the party too long because I never knew when to leave or something. I really connected with that for some reason. So take that as you will, but. Um, what I liked about this movie was that it, it seemed like it was constantly raining shit on this lady and like, not like not, not in a mean way to her. I was just like, mm. I feel like I, I sympathize for this lady, even though it wasn't like that bad. It was just, I guess she is kind of an alcoholic in this too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Actually I like that too, because <laughs> if I, if I was just in Venice alone, I would do the same thing she would do. Mm -hmm. I just hang out and like drink it yeah because it's like she goes to the place and they're like would you like a like a spritzer or something she's like i'll take a bourbon <laughs> and i'd be like yeah because i looked at andrea and i was like yeah uh, and uh but she like didn't pay attention to me which is probably good because um because who would <laughs> yeah, who would who would but um so that that's like what i liked about it i thought that was good and then i thought a few of the other things he did were was good he didn't he doesn't nail them but i think he shows like the crowds really well so it's like she's like alone in the oh, crowd man. and then it'll go to a scene where everything's empty so i think i think it's not per like it's he doesn't nail it it can be done better but i think it was a it was good enough like yeah. do you know what i mean sure yeah i mean like there's like there's like i mean the biggest accomplishment for this movie is definitely like it's like the way it's shot it just looks amazing um mm -hmm. like there's a bit where like i think she's like moving through a corridor like a hallway kind of thing and it's yep. just like um, stunning like it's like holy crap like mm -hmm. one of the one of the big notes i made here was like this would probably look amazing on a big screen like this is a mm -hmm. movie that like you could just watch like in a theater and it would like bump it up so much i think yep. for like my own uh i guess enjoyment but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, definitely that. But, yeah, I guess for, with the sadness thing, I mean, I guess that ne never really happened for me. Um, yep. It just That's never, fine. like, I never really felt that bad for her because in some ways mm -hmm. I'm kind of just like, I don't know, I guess, like, the dick in me kind of makes it was like, well, you're just this, like, you're a school secretary who, like, big goal is to travel mm -hmm. to Venice on her own. I'm like, well, so what? Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely not, like, that type of person. I'm not friends yeah. with people like that. Um, they, they're usually pretty boring people. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, secretaries of the world. I might be insulting. So whose who's only I, goals in life are to travel to places on your own. But like, mm -hmm. you mind being like a, I don't know. I know a lot of like, like hairdressers and stuff like that are just like that too. And I'm just like, oh, that's like not like really a like great life. I mean, I don't know. Maybe my life probably isn't that enjoyable for other people. It's like, I'm just going to sit around October and watch horror movies yeah. like for like hundreds of hours. Like, so be able to go, that's really depressing and shitty. So I don't mm -hmm. know. But for me, uh, I just found that like I just was kind of like I was kind of indifferent to her plight of being yep. I don't know it's like every what I assume a lot of like romance novels are is like um uh, it's for like an audience of people who are like think they're sad and their life's crappy and they 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 make these romantic situations involving yep. Italian men that they meet and they're so interesting <laughs> but like in the story they're not yeah. interesting like I don't give a crap no. about these boring assholes like I don't know mm -hmm. like Catherine this is like uh I mean I've watched a couple of uh Catherine Hepburn movies this last year um like a movie called Stage Door and uh rewatch like Bringing Up Baby yeah, and she's wicked in those movies. Like she's super good. Mm -hmm. Like she's like obviously that's why she's Catherine Hepburn. But in this, mm -hmm. she kind of like was doing it, but it didn't seem like she had. She was quite the right. Like, I don't know. I didn't buy her as this sort of like dumpy secretary on her own in Venice. Yep. Like I, she was dressed that mm -hmm. way. But then like she gets gussied up, and it's like, oh yeah, no, there you go. Yeah, she, yeah. that's right. She's a movie star. <laughs> it it would be like if current day, like if there was a movie that had like uh, Emma Stone or Scarlett Johansson or uh Kate Blanchett and it is like they played him up as being like real dumpy but then there was a scene where they came out and they're like oh <laughs> is that what you mean like kind of um, I mean like, okay I, well, I don't know it's just like 
there i think i think now you could actually like we have the technology rj to like dumpify yep. women maybe better than this like whereas this is like mm. oh look she's wearing like a a, a, a down a dumpy dress and that's it but mm-hmm. she's like still like she's not super glamorous but she's still like i don't know she's still Catherine hepburn um, well <laughs> the only movie that ever nailed that was she's all that so i believe that is a future criterion pick uh yeah i'll have to check on that yeah um, um no i think though like I, I agree with you. Like, that's fine. Um, we don't have to agree on it. Early. Oh, no. We don't I, have oh. to both like every movie. Hey, but I, I do I, think I, like I understand why you don't connect with the sadness. Yeah. I mean, because you are a horrible person who yeah. likes Todd Salon's movies. And, and, and his, his take on sadness is humorous. And and also, uh, I, I prefer the sadness of oral sex vampires. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I find so, sadness um, in that. But no, yeah. I uh, It's like I said, like... I, I connected with the sadness, not in like I'm not a I'm not a 40 year old woman who has never done anything and then traveled to Venice. But for whatever but, reason, but I was like, be. yeah, I get it. I might be one day. I, I surely will be. Maybe one you are day. right now. You don't. Know <laughs> I'm about halfway there. I'm yeah. I'm halfway there. But uh, um, no, I don't know. I, like I. I, I liked it. So no, it's like I said, cool. there, there are parts of the movie that I didn't like for sure. Like, okay. especially the annoying people, oh. because you know, I hate annoying people. Oh. Um, and there were points where like, like I was saying, the way she talks, sometimes you're just like, Ugh. I was like, don't wonder- do that. Yeah, I was kind of wondering how you'd handle the uh, Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think if uh, she was in a different role where she wasn't trying to play a sad person, I think it would really get to me. Like, Put her in Sid and Nancy, and I'd probably hate that too. Oh, um, <laughs> that sounds wicked. <laughs> but uh, I think Carrie in- Grant is Sid Vicious. Yeah. Oh, God. No, uh, Humphrey Bogart. Pass no, actually, Carrie with. Grant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's who I meant. Yeah. The guy with uh, the learning. Bogart. Well, it could be Humphrey Bogart. They're both in an African queen. Her, uh, yeah. Him and uh, old, old uh, Catherine. Kate. Yeah. I don't understand how they are or the way they talk, the way they talk. Yeah, but, uh, that's one thing I don't think I've heard anyone say. African African queen missing heroin addiction, <laughs> on a, but on a boat. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was gonna say though, I think there's a scene in this movie that perfectly describes you and my take. There's a scene when she just gets to Venice and she's like looking at the water and she's it's like oh so beautiful, and then someone from up upstairs dumps a bunch of garbage, throws garbage out their window into the water. So I'm I'm her on the ground and you're the dude throwing the garbage. Wow, there you go, <laughs> right right into that into the into the Venice Channel yeah. thing, whatever. Uh, yeah. So here's my uh, my big money quote um, mm-hmm. from Mr. Renato De Rossi. Um, you are like a hungry child who is given ravioli to eat. No, you say <laughs> I want beefsteak. My dear girl, you are hungry. Eat the ravioli. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I seriously uh, like I don't know I had kind of like phased out and then there's like yeah. that ex- the, the exchange where he's like talking to her to like have sex with them and like to yeah. be okay with the fact that him is he's married but it's not a mm-hmm. real marriage and I just like what the fuck is that <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I'm really glad you brought that up because I didn't make a note of that, but Andrea laughed so fucking hard at that. And for like a day, she was like, beef steak. Like, <laughs> you want beef steak? Like, oh man, that was so funny. And then you go, eat the ravioli. <laughs> eat the ravioli, a beef steak. Um, yeah, that's really funny. Uh, my quote of the movie, uh, it's not as good as yours. But uh, other than the one I really liked about staying at parties, I thought it was really funny when that fat old American dude was like, they're talking about art, and he's just like, truth is, I don't understand pictures. I have bad feet. <laughs> like, I was like, what? I was like, that's such a weird thing to say. Uh, I thought that was good. really funny. That's pretty good, yeah. actually. I missed that um, one. Uh, and then I'll, I'll just make one more thing. I wrote a note, and uh, I can't remember at what point this happened, but uh, I wrote a note in my book, and it just says, Italians are sex criminals. Oh, so, yeah, I didn't. I didn't need to watch this movie to know about to that. To know that, yeah. Just, I think that's a funny thing too. Like when she encounters people, she's like so like her nervousness is so suggestive of like the impending doom that all the men in Italy are about to rape her. That's what I. Maybe that was something that. That's just how I interpret Italian men. But uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is very, very um, suspect. Yeah. So, no. That's kind of like. Um... When I've like talked to people who have like traveled to Europe and like they've mm-hmm. made those stops uh, to Italy, I often hear about like the creepiness of uh, the uh, Italian males um, in their uh, 
wolf whistling and like following like blonde mm-hmm. women around and it's just like oh yeah, and you don't you don't get you get that kind of beat out of you for the most part uh over here but uh yeah it's, all, it, <laughs> i don't know they also <laughs> cast their daughters in movies and get have make them have nude scenes for no reason so uh thank you dario thank you dario uh, I'm never going to watch that Stendhal Syndrome movie that you're talking oh, about. That yeah, sounds yeah. way too creepy. Yeah, that's a perfect time to bring that movie up, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's a beautiful-looking movie. Uh, Catherine Hepburn is okay. Yep. And, uh, I mean, every time I looked up, I saw something that looked great, but the story yep. is just nothing too interesting at all for me. Um, I will never watch this movie again, which is a strike me against neither. it. This is something that I weigh against with uh, watching these movies. It's like, well, I watch this again. And, like, you know, I started, like, looking around for like what what's the praise for this movie or like why like i have a hard time figuring out why this is in the criterion collection i have this feeling mm-hmm. that it must have been a trade-off for like maybe one guy's like hey we're gonna get dead ringers and robocop in here and then there's the guys like well come on you guys gotta put summertime in i really like yeah, it yeah. and so they okay slotted it in between like these like like weird like strange sex thrillery things and like just onslaught mm-hmm. of ultra gore violence and they're like and here's summertime, which, sorry, folks, it's just not mm-hmm. for me. Um, so, yeah, this is my first thumbs down, I think, in our creep. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think, like, Walkabout is, like, is as weak a film uh, for, like, different reasons. But at least that movie yeah. I find constantly interesting. And, like, it had, like, I guess viewpoint that I found interesting, if at the times repulsive. Mm-hmm. So, but, I mean, I just found this movie was, like, a pretty unimaginative love story of, like, the American and a European country learning sensuality. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's so terrible. It's just, oh. Man, that happens every day with me, though. Uh, yeah, you're, you're always learning about that uh, European sensuality. Uh, yeah. Where have you been, man? Uh, Jeez. Not in the right places, I guess. Um, nope. So, yeah. You know what? Here's an interesting thing I did discover. What's that? This movie has absolutely no fans on Letterboxd. <laughs> of, no every, of every single film we've watched up to this point, the, the minimum is five fans, I think. And I, I checked wow. this. I looked through. I checked every single movie. Um, yeah, this movie has zero fans, which I think is telling that, like, it's just, like, a movie that, like, is there uh, completely. Like, the only reason, like, anyone probably watches it is if you're mm-hmm. either a big David Lean fan, which there's, like, I mean, whatever, for the sake of completion, you'd watch it. He didn't make that many movies. Um, yeah. You're a Criterion collector. So, I mean, that's mm-hmm. kind of like the job of the Criterion to bring movies, I guess, of significance as they deem uh, insignificant to people. And if you're a Catherine Hepburn fan, like those are like, th- I mean, those are three pretty good reasons, I guess, to check this movie out. But I feel, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, this movie's kind of a, a weak sister entry in the uh, greater uh, works. Um, sure. Even like, sure. yeah, like looking ahead, like there's some really good stuff coming up. Um, yep. And this movie's kind of like an odd one out. Um so mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I totally yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, like I, I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that I had like been mainlining like weirdo Jess Franco movies and horror stuff for Probably. a long time, and then I don't know. Like I just don't think I could ever care about this story too much. Like it just, I don't know. It's just sort it's of not there. for you, Jarrett. It's not for me. It's not for you, um, man. Oh, hey, here's here's another uh, piece of great trivia. Um, mm. Also hot from Wikipedia. In one scene, the character of Jane Hudson falls into a canal when she steps backward while photographing De Rossi's <laughs> shop in San Bernaba de Venezia. Leading mm-hmm. lady Catherine Hepburn, concerned about her health, was disinclined to do the stunt herself, but Lean felt it would be <laughs> obvious if he replaced her with a double. He filled the water with a disinfectant that caused it to foam, which added to Hepburn's reluctance, then required her to film the scene four times until he was satisfied with the results. That night, Hepburn's eyes began to itch and tear. She eventually was diagnosed with a rare form of conjunctivitis that plagued her for the <laughs> remainder of her life. <laughs> oh my god! So she that got poor so, woman. So she made she got pink eye and had it forever. Hey, I got the uh, thanks summertime. Is, thanks, David Lean. Holy shit, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, I had a I can't even believe that I had a um an allergic uh, uh like a uh, case of conjunctivitis a while ago and it is 
the worst. So I can't even like I know Pink Eye is like way gooier even. So it's like yeah. it's like for for this fucking movie that it's like if you pull up her uh, page, it's not even the top four. So it's like, man, I feel bad for you. Yeah, and she got like bullied into it by David Lane, that jerk. Yeah, what an asshole. Get, get, in, like, the, get in the water. Get in the goddamn water. Get in the water. <laughs> Oh, it's more, but I guess he's British, so get in the goddamn water. I don't know. Fuck. Oh, oh man. Get, get in it. Get in it again. I can't believe he did, made her do it fucking four times. That's well, unbelievable. Hey man, it's about cinema, man. You gotta get the right shot. Jesus. Well, um, yeah. I feel bad. I I sympathize for her, man. Like that's really shitty. But hey, RJ. Yo. Who hated this? Uh, you, I guess. <laughs> I don't even, I couldn't even say I hated it. I was just like, yeah. like hugely indifferent to it. Um, so I'd say maybe it's not the worst film we've watched, but it's definitely the least lesser of the films we've watched. And yeah. that's, yeah. Okay. So half star from Daffy of, from May 8th Ooh. of 2013, really bad movie. The female <laughs> character can't stop whining and crying. It's depressing. Most of all for a female viewer. Fortunately, the Venice setting was enchanting, but that's the only positive thing I can find about this movie. Ellipsis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's sad. Uh, okay. Here yep. we got two stars from yeah. David L. L. Er- er- Erlich. Uh, mm-hmm. David Lean's worst? Gorgeous from head to toe, start to finish, but I can't recall a single compelling thing that happens here, though Lean, as always, sure knows how to shoot the shit out of trains. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That is accurate. Yep. Uh, and uh, another one here is num- uh, two and a half uh, by Hans Millet. Uh, basically, just a beautiful postcard of Venice featuring Catherine Hepburn and a creepy gray haired Italian guy who sleeps with <laughs> middle aged American tourists. Also contains one of the strangest why you should sleep with me speeches in film history. The word <laughs> ravioli is used more than once. Yeah, that's absolutely accurate. <laughs> as as discussed on our episode of Summertime that you're currently listening to. Uh, please refer back to uh, our episode of Summertime if you are wondering where this ravioli stuff is coming from. That's right. That's yep. right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Hey, any last thoughts on this year thingamajig? Nope. No, no uh, I agree with you. I'm probably never going to watch it again. So uh, at the time I watched it, I, I, I guess I was just in the right mood. Would but, you re- uh, would would you recommend people check it out? Uh, it would depend on the person. Okay. I would. I w- If I had watched this and you were like, "Hey, how's summertime?" I'd have been like, "You wouldn't like it." Yeah, there's not enough dogs getting run over and yeah, you know, and and just people sex doing vampires home. or yeah, stuff Pe- like that. People being whipped and beaten in dungeons. <laughs> Yeah, but like if my aunt was like, "Hey, what's a good movie?" I'd be like, "Hey, you should check out Summertime." Yeah, that's actually a good point. This is the movie you could yeah. throw to the parents of uh, the, the movies yeah. that we've watched and be like, "Yeah, this is cool. It's no Dead Ringers. Mm-hmm. No one's mutant vaginas <laughs> investigated with uh, crazy apparatus." I would still recommend that first. I'd be like, "Dead Ringers, Silence of the Lambs, Salo, and then Summertime." <laughs> Salo. Ah, good times. Well, folks, I think that's it for summertime. And after the break, uh, well, it's all just uh, prologue to Rob 